Do you hate your midsection? I'm talking belly fat. Or have you ever daydream or fantasize about having someone else's body or find yourself comparing your body and your abs to other women's and envying them? I know I have, and this was a big struggle for me most of my life, and I know that it's a battle that most women face. And so in today's video, I want to talk about four steps that will help you overcome your obsession and hatred for your body and for your belly and really just your whole body too. Um, for years when I looked in the mirror, I fixated on my lower stomach. I hated it. And if my stomach pouch could talk, it would say something like, you're fat, you're not skinny enough or good enough or pretty enough to be worthy of love. And Deep down, I knew and that that wasn't true, that my beauty and my ability to be loved wasn't found in my body fat percentage or whether or not I had perfect abs, but I continued to believe and live as though it did. I was obsessed with finding the perfect diet and exercise routine that would lead to the perfect body with six pack abs. And so I would worry about how many calories I was eating and honestly, I became somewhat afraid of food, mainly carbs, and I wasn't just afraid of carbs, but I was afraid of eating you know, certain foods together or at the wrong time of the day because I was told that that could potentially make you gain weight, something that I did not want to do. And exercise was all about burning as many calories as I could to work off the food that I had eaten and to try to put myself in a calorie deficit. And so I directly did high intensity workouts several times a week and exercise was really more of a chore or punishment than something that I actually enjoyed doing. So if you're like me, you know that this obsession can overtake your life and it's not a healthy way to live physically or mentally and spiritually. And I know that you don't wanna live this way. You know that this is not the life that God wants for you. And what you really want is to be able to look in the mirror and to love the reflection that is staring back at you and who God created you to be. And we are more than bodies. Our purpose on earth is not to be as skinny or as pretty as possible. When we get to heaven, there's not an eternal reward for having visible abs and a bikini body. And I know that you know this as well. So our mission is to carry out our unique God-given purpose. And we can't do that when we are fixated and consumed by changing our bodies. And the truth is a perfect body and perfect abs does not make us any happier or worthy of love. So just think about all the celebrities who look amazing on the outside, but inside they are wasting away. Their lives are far from perfect, and many deal with depression, anxiety, eating disorders, drug addictions, among you know just so many other things. So if you are struggling with this, you have an obsession and at the same time a hatred for your body, and instead you want to be able to look in the mirror and see who God sees you as no matter where you are in your health and fitness journey, then here are four steps that can help you overcome a negative self view. And if you want, you can even write these um, steps down. So the first step for some of you in overcoming your body hatred is simply just to recognize and admit that at the root of it, you have a misplaced your identity or at least part of your identity in your physical appearance. As I mentioned before, I believe the lie that in order to be worthy of love, I needed to have the perfect body. So I had misplaced part of my identity um, in and worth in my body rather than fully in God. So ask yourself, where do I find my worth, my identity and purpose? If your beauty was stripped or you never obtained the body that you really desire, would you still feel loved and that you had a purpose in this life? Um, I want you to know that you are loved and that you do have a purpose and our creator defines, or a creator defines an object's value. So your worth isn't determined by you, 
your family, your friends, or anyone else. It's determined by God alone, and He has given each and every one of us a, an identity and purpose that is found only in Him. So if you feel less than because of what you look like, then ask yourself, am I allowing God to define me or someone else? And if you find that your identity, worth, and purpose is in anyone or in anything other than God, or you're letting someone else define you, like your appearance, then your identity has been misplaced. And then the next step, the second step, which I find the hardest, is actually letting go of the pursuit and the need to obtain the perfect body, which in a sense is your false identity. So for more, most people, unless you are seriously genetically blessed, having the ideal body and visible abs is not healthy physically or mentally and spiritually. So it requires a low body fat um, percentage and often the people who, or the women that you do see who have these low body fat percentages and you can see their abs, what they don't tell you is that they have an eating disorder, they lose their periods, they have high cortisol levels because their body is under a lot of stress from chronic under eating, over training, and just the emotional and uh, mental pressure of feeling like they have to look a certain way. So surrendering my body to God was not easy because the lie that I needed to have the perfect body was so ingrained in me that I didn't want to give up the pursuit because a part of me in, inside still was afraid of not being labeled pretty and finding someone who would really love me and be proud to be with me. So deep down, it was hard to kind of let that go. But at the same time, I wanted to break the chain and not be enslaved to my body and have it be an idol in my life that would impact my relationship with God and also my witness to others. And so I knew that I needed to let it go. So I want you to ask yourself, do you need to let go of the pursuit and the need to obtain a perfect body? And perhaps even more importantly, are you willing to do that? If so, then the third step can help with the previous two steps, and that is to renew your mind with the truth of who you are, your identity in Christ. So we have to cut through the lies that our culture tells us, Satan tells us, who influences our culture, and possibly even our family, peers, coworkers, you know, what they say about us, our beauty, worth, and, you know, purpose, and find out the truth. So this involves reading and meditating on God's word and who he says is true of you. So God's, our, our creator's opinion and approval is really the only one that matters. But because our culture continues to promote and to convince us that our beauty and worth is found in our physical appearance, and of course Satan doesn't give up on attacking us, we have to keep renewing our mind. Um, it's not just this one and done thing. Oh, I read this scripture of what God says about me. Now I'm good to go. Renewing your mind is an ongoing process and it might even be like a daily occurrence, especially at the beginning. Um, you know, when Satan's going to really try to uh, attack you because he doesn't want you to be set free from your false identity. But once you continue to fill your mind with the truth, God's word, it will become easier to then defeat the lies and to replace it with the truth. And even um, will start to become more of your default thought of who you are. So this doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and it takes intentionality to renew your mind with the truth. And then the fourth and final step is to fix your eyes on Jesus and his kingdom. So Hebrews 12, 2 says to fix our eyes on Jesus. And Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you so when we fix our eyes on jesus and we seek his kingdom first on what truly matters and why we are here we'll realize that our physical appearance is inconsequential there is no body type that qualifies us or disqualifies us from fulfilling you know god's purpose and kingdom each one of us has been given a purpose and mission that can only be fulfilled by us. And so then you can focus on running your own race rather than comparing yourself to others. So that's something that really helps me is I think about, okay, Allie, am I running my own race right now? Does my body 
and the way I think of myself, does that really matter? Um, so definitely think about fixing your eyes on Jesus. Tim uh, Tebow has this quote where he said, fix your eyes on Jesus and it'll fix your heart, which I love. And I think about whenever, you know, I find myself critiquing or criticizing or comparing my body. And when I do that, it's a sign or a red flag to me that my eyes are not fixed where they belong. And so I remind myself then of who I am in Christ and the mission that he has given me. And then when I do this, I can see me the way God sees me as fearfully, wonderfully made and as his masterpiece and then focus on my calling. So those are my four steps that if you do them and you continue to do them, it will help you overcome your, your body and your belly fat hatred like it did for me. And in my coaching programs, my goal is to help you develop a healthy relationship with food, exercise, your body, and most importantly, find your identity and worth in Christ because I know that this is vital to living the full and abundant life that Jesus came to give us. So if you're interested in learning more about this or you want to chat about your body image, then please feel free to message me and I would love to chat with you um, further. So. Yeah, definitely direct message me. Thank you guys for um, watching today's live, and I will see you back here on uh, Thursday at 12 um, p.m. for another live on Facebook. So hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you later.